<laughs> Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to Soccer's Overtime, your weekly look inside the San Diego Soccer's and the Major Arena Soccer League. It's Craig Elston, Jerry, he met back with you one day later than usual, but back in our regular location, we are live on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash San Diego Soccer's, where you can catch us usually Tuesdays at 5 p.m., but this week, Coming to you one day later. Why? Because yesterday the soccer said they were busy. We were busy. Busy watching the soccer's beat up on the Ontario Fury by an 8-2 to two score. San Diego now first place in the MASL. First place by 14 points in the MASL West. Jerry Jimenez, good evening to you, my friend. Good evening, sir. It's good to be back here. Uh, what a game. I'm so glad we get to talk about a a beating. I mean, just domination. We we build different around here. But no, I'm excited to uh, talk about it and get into it. And also, special guest, too. I'm excited for that. Yeah, coming up, uh, this is what's happening on the show this evening. And we say a special hello to everybody who's watching the replay on our YouTube channel at San Diego Soccer's. Special hello to everybody where we are in your ears listening to us as a podcast, uh, wherever or however you may be subscribing to us in the U.S., Mexico, Canada, or wherever you are listening. On tonight's show, San Diego wins three in a row on the road since last we spoke and grabs hold of the number one spot in the take out Tacoma twice. Then they drop Fury into more of a depression than really a Fury now. More and more like just a sadness. Dockers Captain Craig Childs will join us at 5.30 and big news Soccer's Cap Craig Childs mustache will join us at 5.30. Make sure you stay tuned for that. The stash will be here at 5.30 plus a big announcement today in the NWSL. How does it impact the MASL? League news, soccer's news, all of it coming up on this week's edition of Soccer's Overtime. Let's start things off, though, my friend, uh, with what happened last night at Toyota Arena, uh, a game that people saw live free on HD, uh, on MASL TV, on YouTube. Soccer's get the first eight goals against Ontario, shut out the Fury on their home floor for almost 53 minutes and beat the Fury 8-2. to two. That's why I titled this week's show uh, kind of a multi-layered one, but peak performance. How can you expect the Soccers to play much better than they did in taking out Ontario on Tuesday night, Jerry? Yeah, you can't. I mean, going into this, I, it felt, you know, hey, I, I'm going to hope for the best, expect that they're going to be tired, expect, especially after having, you know, those those uh, those games back to back not long before Ontario coming in well rested. Uh, it was definitely one that we didn't expect the soccer's to not 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 win but it was more of you know it's going to be a tight game it's going to be a close game it's going to be a tough match uh for the soccers and it wasn't uh which was so surprising to me but man you you can't you couldn't want any better than that you know i was talking to craig giles and to our gm sean bowers to our assistant coach cheeky luna before the match and saying you know, as we were standing in the hallway there, which you remember outside Toyota Arena where the soccer's locker room is, and then right across the way is the Ontario locker room. And I was pointing at their door saying, you know, guys, this is a must-win game for Ontario. I mean, maybe not must-win like your season's over if you lose, but if you really think that you're hashtag championship bound and that you're going to finish ahead of the soccer's and be the favorite to win the title this year, well, you've got some work to do, right? Coming into Tuesday night, 11 points behind San Diego, having lost twice on your home floor to the Soccers, you're going to have to come out there and play your best game of the year. And so that was kind of what Craig and I talked about, Jerry, was, you know, you're going to have to play your best game of the year. So the Soccers have to have that attitude too of like, hey, let's come out with that sharpness like it's our must-win game. And I mean, <laughs> it's pretty clear which team actually felt that way because Ontario at no point looked like a team playing a must win game. No, they looked so out of, uh, I don't know the out of it. Honestly, they did not seem 
like they were organized at all. Uh, there was just so many silly errors that they committed. Obviously, some unfortunate uh, things for us, fortunate or unfortunate things for us, unfortunate for them. Like those two, I would say three big errors actually from uh, from Toth. Uh, you know, those definitely cost them. And I think it was the little things. And I don't know if they were just thrown off by those first couple of goals from the soccer. And then it was just, you know, it was going to be an uphill battle, battle for them. You could tell right away. Yeah, I mean. A couple of things really stand out, and especially in that first quarter. The Sockers get three goals in the first quarter to really take control of the game. We're showing the highlights for those who are watching live with us on Twitch. And if you're just listening, this is why you want to come in. Go check out the YouTube video uh, when it's done and when it's posted on our channel. You can see the visuals that we are seeing uh, in real time on the show. But that first quarter really stood out to me, Jerry, because of the unselfishness of San Diego, of the way that they're really playing for each other. And, and you look at all three goals and, and the first goal, you've got Escoto and Pee Wee and Childs all around the net. And each of them have a chance to go for glory. And Escoto gets the ball back and he sees Childs on the back post. And instead of shooting where he didn't really have a great angle, where Toth might've gotten the save, he makes that safe pass. Now I remind you, it was just the night or the game prior, uh, Saturday in Tacoma, where it was the same two guys in a goal mouth scramble, and it was Childs passing it back to Escoto for a back post tap in. So these guys are spotting each other. They're hitting the open man. They're just playing an unselfish level of offensive uh, attack that it, it's becoming the standard for the club, Jerry. And I, I got to say, I mean, I've watched the soccer club a long time. I don't think I've ever seen them this consistently sharing the ball in a democratic manner. That is amazing to hear, especially from somebody like yourself who has been around the, the team for so long, has been following them and really is in tune with, you know, every season and how they've played each season. That's great to hear. That is amazing because we've been talking about it here on the podcast that there's something about this squad right now that is very different. Um, dare I say, once again, hashtag championship bound for the soccer's. I mean, we are very much, uh, you know, a a team. It feels like a team. It's not individualistic here. Where there's, like you said, there's so many people, and they said it on the pro broadcast. By the way, shout out to Philly and Jonathan who said it themselves. They they said these guys are selfless. They're sharing the ball. You can see it from the stats. I mean, everybody has a goal. Everybody has uh, assists. Like this is a team effort, and it's felt that way. I mean. I was waiting to see it more and more, but I feel like we're far enough into this season to say like, this is, this is the, this is what a team looks like. Absolutely. And, you know, we'll talk to him about it, but I really do think Craig Childs has set that tone and, and you see Childs getting a, a hat trick, you know, in the first half and a couple of, uh, you know, a goal mouth tap in uh, the third goal of a mistake by Toth, but there's Childs to one time it into the net, you know, doesn't take that extra touch that could maybe allow a save to be made a great give and go with Leo for the in between goal. But we've talked about it on previous episodes of soccer's overtime, uh, how, you know, you're talking about a former three-time MVP in Craig Giles, Jerry, you're talking about a guy who's the soccer's all-time leading goal scorer, all-time leading points getter and was the focal point of the offense for the decade of the 2010s. And to see him now being a third forward and letting Tavoy Morgan and Christian Gutierrez get more shifts than Childs does on a regular basis, I think it's incredible because you've got a great goal scorer in Tavoy. You've got a great two-way player in Christian. And then as the third forward, Craig Childs right now, he's got four straight multi-point games. He's a, tracking for a 40-point season. He, he's like the sixth man of the year. You know, the guy who comes off the bench and hits five three-pointers for your NBA team. That, that's kind of the level that he's at right now. Yeah, now it, it, what really is going to matter is them continuing it and continuing to move forward with, with this uh, style, with this mentality also. It's super. It's going to be super important. Uh, and... You know, I 100% agree with you on this. It just, it feels, it feels so good. It feels different uh, from even last season. Uh, these guys just get it. And, you know, what's funny is you, we talk about, you know, how everybody has gotten a chance to avoid Morgan. They, I mean, teams have been able to shut him down the last few, but somehow he's still able to get in there, make a difference. And also, 
because they are so the other teams are so concentrated on stopping Tavoy, we have these other weapons that come in and take advantage of those open spaces. Yeah, go and cover Tavoy. You know what? I don't think Tavoy minds at the end of the day when we're winning because <laughs> you guys are over there worrying about him. Guess what? We have all these other weapons that will take care of business as well. So, you know, will there be a shift where, you know, the, the teams start changing the way that they attack us? It doesn't matter. That's the thing. Like right now, I don't see any holes anywhere, which is oh, so good to be able to say. that. That's the thing, Jerry. And I mean, it's a fair comparison to make to our rival and our opponent. Everyone knows that the Fury's offense runs through number 15, Frank Tayu, the king, the MVP, you know, wielding his mighty scepter. And if Frank Tayu is on, the Ontario Fury are a really tough team to beat. And so like the Sockers with Morgan, right, when you come in to play Ontario, the goal is to stop Frank Tayu. Not many teams are able to do it. The Sockers, as a point of fact, have shut down Frank Tayu five out of five games this year. Frank Tayu got a goal in this game. It was the tenth and final goal of the night on the power play in the fourth quarter, leading uh, trailing eight to one. You know, and I, I think that's the kind of goal you're really happy to give up to to Frank Tayu when the game's on the line. Frank Tayu hasn't put goals on the board for the Fury, but this is the point I'm driving at. It's not a criticism of Tayu. It is a, a of praise of the soccer's defense, but we've seen it in these games, Jerry, when you shut down Frank, it's going to be hard for Ontario to win. They're going to need Justin Stinson to be red hot. They're going to need Deleon to be on his game. They're going to need Pacheco to be on his game. They're going to need a defender like Tepete to knock in a couple of goals or Robert Palmer. Like it's a pretty specific and narrow bridge that the Fury have to walk across to win if Frank Tayu is going to get no goals, no points. But if Tavoy Morgan gets no goals, no points, Craig Childs can get a hat trick. Charlie Gonzalez can get a hat trick. Christian Gutierrez can score a goal. Leo De, uh, De Oliveira can have a goal and two assists. There's, there's too many people. There's too many ways for you to get broken down by the soccer's attack for you to just go, okay, we're going to double team number nine. We're going to shut them down and we're going to take the soccer's out of their game. Well, you can try. And in past years, when it was Craig Childs as the focal point of the offense, that was literally every team's game plan. Well, we're going to take Childs out of the game. We're going to foul him early. We're going to get him rattled. You know, we're going to shut him down. And then the soccer's going to be out of their plan and they're not going to know what to do. Can't do that with this year's team. Just can't do it. No. And, you know, all those names that you just said for Ontario, fantastic players. I, I think it becomes, I mean, obviously the talent is there it becomes a mental thing. It becomes a mental block that they go through where, I don't know, does that crest way heavy on them when they see the soccer's in front of them? You know, and that's, I think, part of it as well. They perform great against other teams. Will they be able to perform against, you know, every team from this point on is what matters. So they have to step it up if they want to, in fact, continue to be one of one of the top teams in the West and, and in the league. Because they current, they definitely are when it comes to talent. You see it on paper; they're fantastic. But they cannot count on Frank Tayu to do everything, as you said. Because at least against the soccer's, we have them figured out clearly. You know, they are lucky yeah. they only get to face us one more time. Let's be honest. Uh, so they need to take advantage of that. They need to get it out of their head. You know, <laughs> I, I love the analogy that they use: uh, be a goldfish. You know, from uh, yeah uh, <laughs> Ted Lasso. It's very much that what they have to do. Uh, for the Fury, it was a couple of unfortunate things that happened, and then them just not picking it up, not getting uh, their head straight, and we just took advantage of that. We we brought it. We knew what we were gonna do. We we're there to do it. Uh, it was bring you know home three points, and and we did, and uh, we got the job done. I mean, eight to zero at one point going into what yeah. five minutes left into the fourth quarter. Uh, yeah, it was like seven uh, seven ish, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was <laughs> eight, it was eight zero. It was eight zero, sir. They scored their yeah. last goals in the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. Like, <laughs> what? what is happening? And we also did, I mean, and, and this is actually, as we're I'm trying to look here at some of the comments, this is absolutely right from Alan Underwood. He said, we're spoiled. Imagine being super bummed about not getting a shutout, especially a good team like Ontario. Like, <laughs> That's exactly right, yeah. Spoiled. But you know what? That's a great 
a, a transition, Alan, thank you, professional podcast host, for the transition to talking about Boris Pardo. Because while this wasn't a game of extraordinary tests for Boris Pardo, we have seen him put to the test uh, more regularly, uh, even in other Ontario games, right? More often, this club was tremendous defensively in front of him on Tuesday night. The Sockers blocked 16 shots on Tuesday night. You love to see it. But I knew that Boris Pardo going into the match on tu on Tuesday night, he had the eye of the tiger, Jerry. Like when I saw him in the locker room before the match, when I saw him on the floor during warmups, it wasn't friendly smile, Boris. It wasn't, hey, here's a hug, you know, let's talk super chill, relaxed. Like Boris's eyes were like burning coal, you know, like black but burning. And he was motivated. I mean, you know, I, I really think I'll say it for him. He didn't say after the game. I think he was very, very motivated to beat Ontario after the suspension he took in the last match at Toyota Arena. And more importantly, the reaction to it and the way that he was called out, you know, the, the press release by the Fury, the tweet that was later deleted by the Fury head coach, you know, all of that stuff was motivation. All of that stuff was irritation for Boris Pardo. And instead of like inviting in Ontario for rent-free headspace, what he did was he shut down Ontario and he let them have the message of what happens when you cross Boris Pardo. And, you know, he brings the effort every single game, Jerry, but I just thought seeing him before the match, I was like, the Fuhrer in big trouble tonight. There was a little extra... Oomph in his in his game that day for sure. Um, you could you could say he was a little furious going into this match. Ew. But okay. yeah, but he didn't get angry. That's the thing, you know. He, <laughs> no, no, he he had, That's the thing. Okay, this is the one thing on top of obviously this team playing like a team, like they're supposed to. They do not let situations in which they felt wrong done or. Um, a, a bad call from a, a, a ref, you know, like they don't let those things get to them. They continue to do what they need to do. So they have uh, the winning mentality right now. They're, they're, they, they know that this is going to be um, that there's going to be a price at the end of the road and they're trying to get there, you know, and you can see it. Did you uh, see the TikTok that we put together for Charlie today? I did. I did. <laughs> it was great. Charlie Charlie likes beating the Fury, that's for sure. And for him to use his kind of patented stop and go, that little stop and, and hesitate and push move, and five hole Chris Toth. I worked Ooh. extra hard to line up that with the uh, XTC song for the one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> as the ball went through his legs. Uh, but my senses were working overtime, watching uh, the, the brilliance of Charlie Gonzalez last night, and really exciting to see him have eight points in the last two games. Yeah, you know, one of the things for me, I expected a bit more from him in the beginning of the season, but I think he was getting acclimated. Obviously, again, we've talked about how many weapons we have in the soccers. So you knew that he wasn't going to maybe get as many goals, as many opportunities, because when he was with Ontario, it was Tayu and Charlie, right? I mean, those were their two main guys. And so here you have a lot more to choose from, a lot more weapons. But it was so good to see him yesterday get that hat trick and the way that he did it. And I mean, you could see his he's happy every time he scores a goal, but he's also such a team player. When it comes to this team right now, it's just I love to see it. And I love seeing his uh, his attitude after every goal. And then after the game too. that interview that you did with him was was great. And he gets it absolutely right. So if you guys aren't following us on so social media, go and check those out. They're on Instagram right now, as well as TikTok. As you mentioned, that you can go and see that video that Craig worked very hard on. He was telling me about it. He's like, I'm working right now so hard to get this lined up right. <laughs> so go and, <laughs> go and give Craig some love and go and check it out. Hey, follow us on TikTok. We're almost to 1,000. Who knows? By now, we might be over 1,000 because I looked earlier this afternoon. Uh, followers on TikTok. Wow. So 
Nice. Shout out to Spencer and Blake, who have been the primary caretakers. I, I drop in every once in a while. The bad TikToks you see, those are the ones I, I make. Um, the good ones are the ones that Spencer and Blake make. You can tell the difference. A uh, couple of more notes from this game as we get ready to transition. Our special guest, Craig Childs, coming up in just a few minutes here uh, on the live show. You know, we talked about how good Charlie was. We talked about Childs early. We talked about Pardo, 16 blocked shots. Chris Toth did not have a good game, and you mentioned it. He he made some big mistakes in the first half. Those mistakes wound up in his net. That's unfortunate. It happens sometimes, right? We aren't all perfect every day at the office. I've certainly stepped on a few rakes uh, in my time and seen him smack me in the face. So, uh, you know, Chris is one of the best goalies in the league. That's not to insult him or anything, uh, but he didn't have a good game. You know, and that I think that really set the tone. But I thought the fury overall, that was something we were actually talking about a little bit at the office today, Jerry, in terms of like how good were the soccers, but also maybe how bad were the fury? Like yeah. maybe we shouldn't be, you know, sniffing our own farts and thinking it smells great so much. Like I, <laughs> I, I don't feel like Ontario was. 100% plugged in for this game. Justin Stinson was kind of invisible. Pacheco missed a, a half open net a couple of times uh, in, in the game. Obviously, Frank was shut down. The thing that I thought was just like, oh my God, if you remember, was the start of the fourth quarter because the Sockers were up 6 nothing, And head coach Jimmy Nordberg had the Fury come out in six attackers to start the fourth quarter. And the Fury had some success in six attacker at certain points, but they're like, okay, let's start. And, sit. and it was like, boop, goal, boop, goal, seven, nothing, eight, nothing. Time to take yourself out of sixth attacker. And I thought that was like the soccer's had dominated the game. They were up five, nothing at the half, but you know, we'd seen San Diego up five, one lose their only game of the year to Ontario. So at five, nothing, I think on the IG live at halftime, I said, you know, this can go, a couple of different ways. The next quarter is important. The next quarter was huge. Soccer's got that sixth goal. But then for Ontario to be like, okay, now we're going to push you around. We're in six attacker. And the soccer's just go counter goal, counter goal, eight, nothing. What would you like to do now? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we'll put Chris back in. You know, <laughs> I, I thought that was like kind of like the final nail in terms of a complete defeat, a, a, a 60 minute defeat. Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, one of my favorite parts of watching MASL is the uh, broadcast team staying as positive as humanly possible throughout the entire thing. And I'm not just talking about Ontario. I'm talking about just everybody. Even even Craig does it sometimes, too, where it's you never know. This is indoor. I know we're 5-0 in the first quarter, but the, everything can turn around. There's still 45 minutes left of game. And. You know, you're in the second quarter and now it's 7 0, and you're like, you never know, it's indoor. <laughs> At some point, I think, uh, you know, we realized, okay, this game is over. Uh, but it was just so, uh, it was such a fun game to to watch. Um, I was actually doing a podcast at the same time while watching it, and I just kept throwing in the scoreline. I'm like, oh, my God, you guys, if you're not watching this game, I'm sorry that I know we're live, but <laughs> this game is so, like, it's so enjoyable. And I kept, um, like every time I looked, you know, it was, it, it was honestly a fury miss, a fury miss. And then, to be fair, soccer's did have a few open nets things too where we missed and we didn't put the ball in the back of the net where it very much should have. Uh, Rojo had a couple, I, if I'm not mistaken. At least I know one for sure. So yeah, one for sure. So I, I mean, to to bring it back to the initial thought of this is, you mentioned it. It, it was it, was it the soccer's being really good, or was it? more the fury not being as good as they normally are i honestly think it's very much a combination of both yeah i i think so too and, and just to wrap it up uh, on that game and kind of tagging the trip we'll go back and, and touch on some tacoma notes uh from last weekend after our interview soccer's have won 10 games in a row you know i've got over my shoulder the uh 48 game winning streak logo from 2010 to 2012 that craig giles was a part of and I think even any time you win 10 games in a row, that, that is worthy of celebration. That is a remarkable win streak. That is a sign of a team that is clicked, that is is firing on all cylinders, that is cohesive and together, and that's amazing. But to be 8-0 and o on the road so far in 2021-22, 
three and zero in Ontario, where the Fury, you know, like were making promotional videos for how they were going to have revenge on their home floor over the Sockers. It's dominant to to those stats over anything else. You know, you can throw up goals for goals against. You can throw up numbers, power plays, whatever. Who's got the highest scoring player? Who's got the highest scoring team? The Sockers have won ten in a row. They're Eight and zero on the road. They're three and zero on their rivals' floor. Beat that. Yeah, say it louder for the people in the back. Eight and zero on the road. That's amazing. Uh, you know they they absolutely have a stronghold right now in the MASL West. That's that's just a hundred percent. Shout out to all the people saying that we were going to be in third, but you know, <laughs> I I agree with uh, with Marlisha. I think it has been good for the soccer having an all road season, you know, and, and a lot of the guys on the team have, have said regularly, we're a better team on the road. We play better on the road because there's less pressure. There's fewer family members. There's less to think about. There's, you know, your day starts in the hotel team stretch, everyone together, team meal travel as a team. It's not, Hey, where's, where are my twins? Where are the kids? Does everyone have their tickets to, you know, are we set? All of that other nonsense, it's its out of your mind on the road. And I do feel this is a very, very cohesive club in that way, which is it's almost ironic, Jerry, in that by doing so well on the road, they're setting up themselves up for a situation where every playoff series they'll have to win at home in the last game because they won't have to be out on the road. Yeah, well, we should. I mean, I feel like we need to start a new hashtag and just, you know, hashtag road warriors because that's absolutely what we are. Um, even if we are not going on the road as, as much now, it doesn't matter. I still like it. I should use it. And look, when you look at the standings, the Sockers now have 36 points. They're five points clear of Florida. Florida has two games in hand. So I would like to say, you know, statistically, the Sockers aren't officially ahead yet. Florida has to drop another point or two in their next two games. Otherwise, once they even up, they could be a point ahead of San Diego. Uh, but... 14 points clear of the Ontario Fury and the Fury have only one game in hand and Ontario has a difficult schedule the rest of the way, including a couple of games against Florida, a couple of games at Chihuahua, Kansas city, their next match. They've got us one more time. Like they've got a couple of games against Tacoma, Jerry, but I was looking at their schedule. They've got a tough schedule the rest of the way. So yeah. I really feel like it's not over. Nothing's ever over, but the Sockers have a stranglehold on the division. Now the idea of them finishing outside of the top three, it would take something that we don't even want to think about. It would take something seismic for that to happen. Well, you said uh, that we are technically not in first place yet because tropics have to drop some points, but uh... I'm saying that tropics have two games in hand. They've played well, two fewer games than us. You said technically, and I just looked on the MASLsoccer.com website, and clearly right there, if you go to it, it says San Diego Soccer is number one. So can we please at least enjoy this right now, Craig? Do not be yes. a party pooper. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, fine. <laughs> Technically, we are number one. Technically, yes. we are number one. Thank but you. there's a way of looking at it in which you say we still have no. we still have work to do. I want to hear know. it. I don't hear it. Can we bring I, on I our guess, guest? Yeah. I don't want to talk to you anymore. Let's, absolutely. <laughs> is our guest ready? Our guest is here? Okay. It yeah. is the bottom of the hour, live on Soccer's Overtime here on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash San Diego Soccer's. Let's welcome on our special guest. You formerly knew him as the three-time MVP of the San Diego Soccer's, as the all-time leading goal scorer for the franchise, all-time leading points getter of the franchise, and as a five-time champion and the captain of the team. That's how you used to know him. Now you know him simply as the stash. Here he is, soccer's <laughs> captain, Craig Childs, joins us on Soccer's Overtime. What's up, guys? It's just, you know, three, three, three dudes uh, with facial hair, you know, having a conversation. Yeah. Nothing crazy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah. You know, three guys who grow hair on their head. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> on the front part. Getting rid of some of this, so just so that I could have a stash. But no, I I found a filter that makes you go like no hair. <laughs> nope. No way. I'm doing that. 
I, I tried to start a stash trend, you know, and in Tacoma, there was a hundred dollar bonus put on the table by Phil for every player who, who had a mustache in that win. And I could tell you Tavoy took his razor right to the, uh, right to the shower. Yeah. Uh, and Xavier collected his hundred dollar win bonus too. I couldn't get gladiator and I couldn't get Rojo and a couple of the other dudes who had facial hair too. I tried to, Tried to get them into it, but you know their beard was was too important for wasn't worth a hundred bucks. Well, we have many more mustache related questions to ask you, Craig, and we will. But <laughs> let's but let's start off with the action uh, on the floor. We just went through uh, the the video in review here on our Stockers Overtime Live broadcast. Spent the last half hour essentially talking about the Ontario game, but taking care of business last night. Uh, such a dominant effort from a three goal first quarter to scoring twice against sixth attacker in the fourth quarter, taking a shutout into the final eight minutes of the game. Uh, it really felt like that was a peak performance from the San Diego Soccer's last night. Yeah, you know, it, it's a little cliche, but we're really focusing on ourselves and making sure that we're um, bringing what we need to, to the table. And, and I think uh, our effort alone will take care of take care of things and you know the rest kind of falls into place the way it goes and so we we were super happy with the performance yesterday we had a really good start um to the game and and um you know we really wanted to focus on putting a solid four quarters down and not having a really good half followed by a bad half which which has happened a couple times yeah you know one of the things too that we talk about uh here quite a bit and we've been talking about it in it's been in steps and now we're like okay we're absolutely there uh there's clearly something about this team that's very unselfish there's a lot of uh you know there's there's a camaraderie there that we can feel like it's evident now and you can see it in the numbers now as well which is um something just great to see where is that coming from was that a mentality thing does it come from the coach does it come from you guys like is that something that you've actually discussed before no, it's not. I, I honestly, I think that that it's um, a credit to some of the leadership in the locker room, whether that's the captains or the coaching staff, you know, but it, it's the club culture that's been built over a decade here and it's been evolving. And uh, this year, you know, the balance is right. It, we, we've got veterans that still have the ability to to add to the game and we've got players in the prime of their career that are performing at a high level. And um, the truth is, and I brought this up to some of the organization members too, I really feel like having two rookies that are actually participating in the games is a real benefit to the morale of the group. You know, we love messing with Sean and Xavier. They're great. They're a great part of the group. And uh, they bring a, um, a little twinkle in our eye, you know, when, when we can help them and we can mess around with them and we can do... Um, all the above, you know, and, and the last real rookie we had was probably Ray Reza, you know, almost a decade ago. And so it's kind of I, I told him, I, I feel every single year there should be a player um, that comes in as a rookie with the intention to get a little bit of minutes and learn just for the for the morale of the group. I love that. That's that's a really interesting yeah. point, Greg. Um, now, we talk about being unselfish, passing to find the open man. It was a, it was a comment Charlie made on his post-game interview last night. He says, I love playing for this team. One of the reasons I love playing for this team is because we find the open man. You know, if there's a guy wide open, we pass to him. Uh, we don't just take the shot, which I felt was a veiled reference to maybe the previous place he played. But ne never mind that. Uh, when you move the ball around, Craig, you have success when you've got one fewer guy to try and break down on defense. And I, and so I feel like the team's unselfishness and willing to move the ball directly translates to 17 power play goals already. And uh, before you guys had one that, that didn't convert last night, you were on a run of, I think seven converted in a row. Yeah. You know, we, we got stonewalled a little bit um, by Waltman in in the game at home because we were shooting from distance and we weren't making that extra pass in in you know in indoor soccer getting to the back post and finding that extra ball off the board often leads to handcuffing the angles of the goalkeeper and and um wide open chances and so you know i think from a player standpoint we don't have any um players that show up on the field and and put themselves or their st their stats before the result of the team and and i think that's 
uh, evident to the way that the ball moves around in the ball and how we play. You know, it's not a matter of who gets the hat trick as long as as long as we get out there with a dominant performance and uh, and we win the game. And so it's a great um, group right now. The morale is, is very good. And uh, and you're right. It's a unique experience. And I'm trying to explain to some of these players that, you know, I've been on parts of teams that that have been in championship contention for a long time. And, and uh, this team has something special and, and we really have to try to capitalize on this and not not let it fall through our fingers because, you know, it'll be something you look back on in 10 or 15 years and and it'll be a hard uh, a hard pill to swallow. Similar to the team we had when when uh, Aguilar hit the crossbar down against us at home and knocked us out. I mean, not, those are. I mean, we we talk about that game still like, you know, an opportunity drop that uh, that we'll never be able to get back. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know, Craig, do we just start just asking mustache questions now? What do we uh, yeah, I was saying, I'll push, I'll push it to the back. I'll push it to the back. You know, I was going to uh, say, yeah, I feel like you may have some more technical questions. That are I, way I more do have some more technical questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you know, you and I have talked about it personally, Craig. We've talked about it at training. We, we've talked about it on broadcasts as well, but now we can talk about it on the podcast uh, so we can complete the set. But I, I, I feel like, the production this club is getting out of the forward position is unparalleled right now because you've got Tavoy Morgan, who's one of the top goal scorers in the league, who's a constant presence that, uh, as we talked about in the first half hour of the podcast, even when he doesn't score, he's demanding a double team. He's demanding attention. You've got Christian Gutierrez, who's arguably the best two-way forward in the league right now. And then there's this crazy third forward named number 37, Craig Childs, who, who pops in and comes in on some set pieces, comes in on some power plays. I feel like you're the NBA sixth man of the year right now, Craig. You're, you're like Kevin Love coming off the bench for the, the Cavs and scoring 24 points in 13 minutes, you know, on for four threes. It's, it, it's, it's sorry for the NBA cross analogy, but uh, if you didn't agree to have a slight step back, in terms of the focus of the attack, we couldn't have the production we're seeing right now. So I'm saying this in a long-winded way to give you credit, my friend, because clearly as just a little bit, still incredibly productive, 25 points, you've recognized a spot where just taking, taking a little bit less winds up giving a lot more. No, you know, the the line that I'm in is very balanced and everybody has a, a relatively specific and, and unique skill set that they're really good at and they bring to the table. And you're right, Tavoy is physical and he backs down into players and players do not like playing against him because he enjoys that contact and Gladiador on the on the transition and on the counterattack is, is lethal and not to mention his defensive work rate on the on the press too. And, and uh, I'm a little bit of the, the relief pitcher, the X factor coming in on some free kicks and set pieces and limiting some of my shifts and, and trying to do my best to not get caught defensively in, in too many tough situations. And so truthfully, everybody's learned, you know, everybody's learned and kind of taken a hold of their role within our line, you know, and, and we joke around, you know, to voice the, to voice the number one and, and uh, we're supporting him a little bit as much as we can. And, and the truth is, it's different than having two or three targets that are all in the prime of their career that are all fighting for the for the goals, right? And, and you can look at Florida. They've got three, four fantastic targets. I mean, targets that would want to be in twos every place in the city and would never want to sit out a game and would never want to miss a shift. And, um, and it's very different. You know, I, I, I joked around that. You know, Tavoy, if our goalie has the ball, Tavoy has taken 98% of the goal throws. I don't do goal throws anymore, Tavoy. That's in your <laughs> wheelhouse, buddy. Um, and so it's just this balance that we have that is unique. And all of us are in uh, the right part of our career to be able to uh, to do it. And, and something that should be tabbed on is Christian's fitness level and his ability to sustain the effort that he puts in. Uh, both transitioning up the field and defensively. And, you know, you, you can't just find another player to D run up top because uh, Christian is much more than a D runner. And, um, and it's because of the work that he puts in. It's because of the professionalism that he carries himself with uh, on and off the field. Well, 
going from forwards to, as you mentioned, a great segue into defense. There's a clear commitment here on the defensive side of things. Um, we've done such a fantastic job in defense, and we've said it here, and we'll continue to say it. Uh, we strongly believe defenses win championships, right? Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? About that, the club's commitment to 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 the defense right now. Yeah, you know, and, and truthfully, that's probably been a three or four year evolution. Um, and and I think Renee has has been a little bit of an, a factor in that equation, you know, over the three or four years. But I think a light bulb went off a little bit in, in some of our brains that, you know, our best way to really compete and win the championship was to sit back, back and hit teams on, on the counter, you know, and, and if we high pressed in the last couple of years, it really didn't go well for us a majority of the time, especially against the quality opposition. You know, sure, we could high press a Turlock and get away with a W most of the time and stuff like that. But when it really comes down to the little details, that that wasn't our bread and butter. And uh, the group bought into that and knew that. And I will say, to give ourselves a little bit of credit, we put a lot of work in on the press this year. And, uh, and we found good moments, you know, where we're high pressing on teams, for example, that Tacoma series, we pressed them up the field high. We caused a lot of turnovers. We caused a lot of goals um, in some of those games. And so we realize that if you're going to be a, a one trick pony, you know, it's easy for teams to, to pull out that game film and figure out how to break you down and, and analyze things. And so we have the ability to sit back in the game and frustrate teams and counter like a, like a well-oiled machine. And we also have the ability to switch it up if we need to and, and step up the field and press um and and you know use what we need to use in in certain situations to uh to get it done uh last soccer related question uh and we titled this week's podcast this week's show peak performance because it was such a great game a and you know we've talked about this so many times too right you you referenced the 1819 squad that team went 23 and one this club is right now 13 0 and one uh, you know, with with uh, 10 games left to play in the regular season. So you're on a very similar trajectory. Clearly, the club is playing at full capacity right now. So how do you make sure, Craig, as a captain, as a leader in the clubhouse, that this isn't the peak of the mountain for San Diego that you either maintain or that there's a, a higher level you can get to later? Yeah, you know, it, it, all the guys are are super hungry, and I don't think anybody's really looking into our record that much. You know, you you kind of go two or three games at a time, and right now we're zoned in on KC, which we know is going to be um, a massive game, and and we know we've got Milwaukee with an immediate turnaround after that, and so. You know, really, really, Craig, it's about, you know, pushing each other every single time we go out on the field in, in training and making sure that every single game we, we play that we're mentally prepared to compete and and uh, and give it everything we got on the field. And as long as our effort is there defensively, the goals will always seem to come for us. And so nobody's looking super deep into the future. It's It's really about taking care of Kansas city and focusing on Kansas city over the next 10, 10 days. And with a little bit of Milwaukee um, in the back of our mind. And, um, you know, to go back further, we, we go into each game to win every single game. Uh, if we're first in the league or if we're third or fourth in the league, for me, it, it's not going to be a deal breaker. And I, I could even argue there's a disadvantage of finishing one because for example, say we finish one and Baltimore finishes four or five or whatever it would be, well, then we would fly to Baltimore and play them. And then we would fly back. So San Diego would take two cross country flights. The Baltimore's one cross country flight when we get the advantage right. to play a 15 minute mini game, if it happens. Right. And you're like, okay, is that really a significant advantage to that one seed team? Right. And so we, we, we want to win every game and, and, um, you know, that was our mentality in last last year's playoffs and, and nothing's changed for us. And so, you know, we have room to improve. Everybody knows in our organization that uh, that we can still get better and we can be sharper and we can be a little more disciplined. And, and Craig, all we're doing now is we're fine tuning the little details and making sure that we have deep understanding of power play and free kicks and six attacker, which have been good for us all year and man down six attacker, which has been stellar. And so we got to keep those those details going, keep training those little things, because uh, 
those are those are going to be those you know those extra five or ten percent x factors that that get you through the playoff games you know jerry it's just like facial care right you got to focus on the details you got to make sure there isn't a, a follicle <laughs> out of place you got to uh, you got to get the alignment right yeah it's funny 100 percent. so let's let's get into this because people are yeah, wanting let's, yeah, let's go. <laughs> what's up with the stash where did that come how did that even start what, what's going on here <laughs> you know i i uh the the thursday i had a little beard going and the beard hurts my face a little bit and on thursday we were traveling and i'm like listen i'm gonna show up with my mask on and i'm gonna have a mustache under there and i was i was really <laughs> just trying to mess around with the team at the airport you know and then and then I, uh, I like, you know, razzed everybody and it, and it got, you know, everybody was super like, whoa, what the hell is on your face? And I said, you know, it's my good luck mustache for the weekend trip. And then it followed by our flight getting delayed three times. My single bag was the only bag of 25 that didn't come in and got lost. Oh. And we had to go back to the airport at, you know, 1245 oh, no. to go pick it up. And so it, it, I literally went. Oh shit! Maybe this is a bad luck mustache. And and I I told the team I said I'm bringing the razor and the and the shaving cream to uh to the locker room. And if we're losing at halftime, I'm shaving the stash. I was fully prepared to get this thing off my face at halftime in Game One in Tacoma. Oh if, uh, God. if it wasn't going our way, and so you know now it's like, dude. I I was telling people yesterday it might be a really long mustache before the championship <laughs> game if we keep winning. Um, so. It's just it's just good fun and and it kind of you know woke everyone up and gave us uh, something to laugh about for the weekend. You know, well, and again, clearly you know yeah. how to grow a mustache. I was gonna say so. So I would like to do something, but go go ahead, Craig. Were you gonna say something? Well, no, just that it, indeed you've grown a majestic mustache. Yeah. Uh, in our comments, uh, John San Diego six one nine says it would take me twenty years to grow a mustache. <laughs> Uh, like, like Craig, he he said me, but that's not what he meant. He meant you. He meant Craig with the K. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but what we wanted to do now was to, you know, because you have grown such an impressive mustache. Before we let you go, we thought we'd, you know, offer some uh, comparison stashes and and see kind of where we are on the stash spectrum right yeah. now. So, you know, so I thought we'd start with a couple of classics because you've you've evoked these comparisons already my friend uh let, let's let's go with uh yeah our first let, let's let's go with magnum you know tom Selleck. what do you think of that stash right there that's a solid stash you know i tried to drop it down a little bit um uh towards the lower lip but i i can say that you know a good stash does evolve too with time so yeah it does indeed uh the the one i immediately compared you to when i saw your picture in the tacoma locker room is our next slide uh, which is uh, Stroker Ace here, or the Bandit, depending on your your point of view, the great Burt Reynolds. I mean, not bad to be compared to one of the great sex symbols of the 1970s, Craig. I I think it's more of a Burt Reynolds type stash, you know. Yeah, you know what though? Based on his hat, he's probably a Tropics fan. I'm not sure. That... <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. He went to Florida State. Uh, Andrew Hoxie, UCFC. Consider Ho any uh, think about the twisties. Yeah, Hoxie's first team all all mustache for the decade. You know, he, he's the he's the uh, he's the well known you know mustache man in the league. And uh, right when I first did it, everybody said Hoxie, Hoxie, Hoxie. You know, all the Hispanic dudes are so you know. Ho hey, credit to Hoxie. He's he's had the best mustache in the league for ten years. But but I'm coming for him uh, this year. He looks like he, he looks like he works at a speakeasy after playing soccer. <laughs> He does. Kaz, now, now we're going soccer's history. York stash to Kaz Dana's stash. I'm, right now, I feel like you guys are neck and neck. Dude, dude I give it to Kaz Dana. You know, you can't you can't argue with uh, with history, man. His stash was in the prime of stashes, and so mm. I go with Kaz Dana on that one. And he has well, the, the, that combo too with the hairdo. Like it just. Oh my god! <laughs> yep. Now you can sport the wide collar though. I mean, you can wear the same. We can basically do a side by side on this if we can get you in the retro with the stash. So, <laughs> right. I'll something to consider. We'll uh, make it. <laughs> last but not least, the ultimate stash in the history of the San Diego Soccer's Gert Vijerkovsky. 
1983. If you can get to the mutton chop, if you can get to the full, but that's what I'm thinking. If you keep getting two points a game, Craig, just start Dude. letting the sides grow down. To go into a go into a Fu Manchu, you know for sure. That's uh that is the progression, you know that I could that I could see uh coming down the road. That's a that's a quality stash. I aspire to get to that level uh, soon. Well, we aspire legend. to get to your level. And one thing that I, you know, I wanted to do is what can we make happen here? Uh, I don't, I oh. the, having the lower <laughs> no. hair, having the lower part with hair doesn't work. Like I have to completely shave this off and just <laughs> yeah. totally different. Oh. This actually doesn't look terrible. Right. But, but this one I was really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that that I, is I good. I feel like Craig can pull it off. He does have a oh, little yeah. less hair, a little less hair than this picture, but I feel like, I feel like Craig can pull it off, Craig. So, oh my gosh, uh, I, I just can't grow out the sides long enough to get to that 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 hoxie esque little <laughs> bow out to the end. Oh wow, fun with stashes. Fun. It's not even November. Who knew? Right. No, ahead Mo of the game. February. <laughs> We're ahead of the game around here. <laughs> Craig, always a pleasure, my friend. Thank you for spending some time with the soccer fans here live on our Twitch channel. Incredible weekend, incredible run. Keep it going. A chance here to kind of, uh, you know, tap the brakes a second. I think you guys have a, a little team activity planned before the week's out, right? Yep. Paintball. It's uh, the world versus Team Mexico on Friday. So it should be, it should be pretty fun. You know, I, I got savvy and Anne Marie. Paul Savage is a, is a, is a serious paintballer. He's the only one who shows up with camo and cleats and, and multiple extra ammunition packs. And so he's going to be our, our MVP in paintball as well. MVP trainer, MVP paintball. This is coming up. The soccer's win together. They stay together. The captain is Craig Childs. Thanks so much for your time, my friend. Best to your family tonight. Thanks guys. Have a good one. What a guy. What How a much guy. fun. How much fun. <laughs> you weren't expecting that one, were you? Cut you Oh, off. I love it. John San Diego th thinks I look like Faraday. He says, uh, Craig looks like he's about to start calling golf. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I like golf now. Don't, don't put it past me. Oh, he's yeah. Got a twisting 15 foot putt on the 16th green. Oh, oh that's going to be a tough one there. Oh, I could do it. I can handle anything. Come on, man. You, yes, crying. you can. Yes, you can. Can handle it all. What a great uh, Gary McCord. Good call. Yeah, not, not fair to Gary McCord. That's a good call. Uh, excellent stuff from the Captain Craig Childs. A lot of great soccer content. A lot of great facial hair content. Uh, all right. Let's bang through uh, some soccer's news here, buddy. We've got just about half hour or less left in today's show. We are generally, by the way, once again, as a reminder for anyone who's tuning in right now who might be a first timer here, uh, that we are generally on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. That is our regular time, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. So bookmark us here, twitch.tv slash San Diego Soccers. And to everyone on the podcast, hey, make a note of it for next week and future weeks. We really like... We Go ahead. They, they, people need to come and actually do it to see it live to be able to see this maj majesty right here like you have to do it you can't see it because you're listening to us right now you, you're not seeing what i'm showing you and we're not going to talk about what it is we already did so the problem so yeah the problem i have with that picture is that i'm not like in a steampunk outfit you uh, know like I, I feel like i should have a whole steampunk regalia like a, a giant turquoise top hat and <laughs> A, a, oh. a watch on a fob you, you know realize, like a, a you, realize what you're doing, right? you realize you're talking to a person that knows photoshop I you do. are not helping yourself <laughs> out here Craig. <laughs> i'm just creating i always think of the funniest thing you know that's why we get such great posts on soccer social media <laughs> haven't still i'm still waiting for the fury press release after i post today but or telling me or telling me to go directly to jail that is fantastic yes <laughs> 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 oh man yeah if craig still has that mustache next friday i will have a series of running motif mustache references that i will weave into the play-by-play -play oh, that will just be extremely funny but will never be released like a joke you know what i'm saying like i'm already ready for that so be ready for funnies uh ne next friday I don't think there's a ton to talk about from the Tacoma series. Uh, 
there's there's something important to talk about from the Tacoma series, which is maybe why the stars have looked like such a disorganized, dysfunctional unit, which we'll get to in MASL news. Um, but you know, the, the nature of this club right now, Jerry, they're a little shorthanded. They obviously don't match up with the soccers. Uh, they've come up with a low pressure strategy by which they can keep a game close. And it does feel like when they're playing two games in the weekend, that their strategy is put it all into one game, you know, try, try and dig that one game out of the fire. And they tried that on Friday and that was the game that was kind of close. You know, it was low scoring, but the soccers were in the lead the whole way and they wound up winning at six, three. And then the game that we're rolling the highlights on right now on our Twitch channel was the Saturday game, the second game. And it was an absolute boat race. I mean, 12 to three, the soccer's in complete control, very similar to the Ontario match, to be honest, uh, in terms of just absolute domination by the San Diego soccer's just the difference being 12 goals instead of eight. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And, you know, obviously we've seen that multiple times now, and this is a constant thing with Tacoma where you're saying they put all their effort into one game, the following one, not so much. And it's like pick and choose. Um, actually, and one thing that I wanted to mention to you, I don't know if you're aware of this. If you go to Wikipedia right now, to the to Tacoma Stars Wikipedia, and you look under owner, it says Branding and Scotto. <laughs> <laughs> I would understand why. I mean, Brandon had a hat trick on the Friday game when they needed him. Uh, he yep. had one assist in the Saturday game when really his, his efforts weren't needed. But 14 points in five matches against the Stars. He's the star killer. Brandon Escoto. I mean, you know, you look at his season total, 28 points. So half of his points have come in five games uh, against the Tacoma Stars. They just can't keep up with his quickness. No, I mean, Brandon is going to do Brandon things. Uh, Churras is just so fantastic in, in everything that he does. That man is ridiculous with the ball at his feet. And it's such a joy to watch him. And I just feel like he has this special oomph when it comes to Tacoma where he just... He knows exactly what to do, when to do it. And he puts the ball in the back of the net. And when he doesn't, he's making sure somebody else is, you know, like just 14 points in five matches. It speaks for itself. Uh, what what a fantastic job from him. Uh, of course, Leo had a huge game on Saturday with two goals and three assists. You know, he rises up and has these huge point games uh, kind of out of nowhere. But the thing that you got to focus on, the soccer's have now played the stars five times They're five and oh. Nick Pereira is just getting shut out game after game after game in this series. And I, I'd have to go back to look to double check whether he got a goal in that 10-7 uh, match to start the season. But in the last four, Pereira's been shut out. Shut out. One of the best players in the league. And 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 really, you look at five games against Ontario and Tayu gets one real goal at the end of the year. You know, or at the end of the game when they're down 8-1. to one. And then Pereira, five games, and he gets maybe one goal in the first game, maybe. Like, and for the two top stars of this division, the Soccers have the formula to handle them defensively. Yeah, yeah, that's been one like one of the most mind-boggling things for me is how Nick is just not being able to do anything against us. I mean, really, and you said I'll probably have to go back and look at stats, but. I don't think they look good. If off the top of my head, I can't think of any goals that he scored. Maybe, maybe one. Uh, it just, it's so, it's so mind boggling to me how we've been able to do that. Also, I don't, I do think it has a lot to do with Pereira himself though, you know, and, and it goes back to that question as we were talking with Ontario, same thing now with the, with, with Tacoma or with Pereira, I should say, is it us being good or is it Tacoma not being good? Uh, and we can get into that conversation and it becomes an entire different episode, you know, just having that conversation. I'm just double checking because I don't like, uh, yeah. In the very first game, he had one goal, one assist. And since then he's had one assist in four games oh, and it goodness. came in the 12, three loss. Yeah. So three points I mean, with us. Yeah. For, for a guy who's got 25 points this year, you know? So yeah, really, this is this is what we're talking about. Pino, we're talking about Cardenas, we are talking about Cerda, and we are talking about Rojo. Jerry, I will take those four defenders over any other team's quartet of four defenders 
in the MASL. Give me our guys. Give me the speed of Rojo, the tenacity of Pino, the technical ability of Cardenas, and give me the toughness, the grit, and the all-around game of Serda. Th these four guys, every team that comes in, they have to think about game planning Brandon and Craig and Tavoy and Leo you know, and Charlie. But it's the guys in the back that are erasing the other team's attack that, to me, take this team from great to special. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can we just really quick, since you're talking about defense, uh, I just hope that Cardenas cutting off his hair is not bad luck. It doesn't seem to be. It looks like he's still doing good. Uh, but I was so confused when I saw him and his beautiful curls were no more. Like, oh, what happened? I know. We get him back on just literally just for that question. Like, what? Why? Why? <laughs> but yes, no, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, I will take those four guys any day of the week. Like the way you, I don't know if you had thought about this, but the way that you just explained those, you know, talents. That you, I mean, obviously, all of them have uh, all of these things, but the way you did that was masterful, sir. Good job. Much appreciated. Uh, Boris Prado was named Defensive Player of the Week for what happened in Tacoma. Uh, starting both matches, uh, stopping 18 of 23 shots, gave up three goals in one game, two goals in the other. Uh, X finished off the 12-3 blowout. Uh, I think came in midway through the third and finished the game and gave up one goal on four shots. So uh, great effort defensively all the way around, but Pardo then just cementing that with his you know nine-save, two-goal allowed effort in Ontario. Congratulations to Boris. Boris now leads the MASL and wins, Jerry. Uh, he's moved into top three in goals against. And with Hugo Silva maybe not playing anymore for Florida, more on that momentarily in MASL news, I think Boris is starting to build a goalkeeper of the year case. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't have anything to add to that, man. Boris, Boris is just, a, a, he's an animal. You know, he is absolutely in my mind the best goalkeeper uh in the league right now like i just you can see it in his face there's something about him that is just it's it, he's unstoppable man and then he you know he's boris <laughs> so i absolutely wouldn't be surprised at all if he does end up with uh with that accolade to, to add to the many others that he already has so the soccer's come out of three matches on the road in five days against division rivals with three wins, with nine points, with, let's see, uh, plus nine, plus 12, with a plus 18 for the weekend. So they averaged a six-goal win. That's excellent. Wow. And here's the best news, gang. Pretty much came out healthy from those matches as well. Uh, Luis Pee Ortega had an ice pack on his hamstring and was watching the game from uh, the bench area, uh, or pardon me, from, from the corner glass area when I get, went down to the field to do those post-game interviews on, that you can see on Instagram. And I asked him how you do it, and he said, oh, I'm doing okay. And then I talked to Paul Savage, our MVP trainer, uh, earlier today, and he said, yeah, that was precautionary. He started to feel something. And because of the score, we said, take him out, put him on ice, you know, put him on wraps so that he'll be fine to go on the 25th and the 27th. So the stalkers who have been playing so many games in such a tight period of time, Jerry, really, they didn't take a major injury during that time. And as such, have a chance with these nine days in between games uh, be between Ontario and Kansas City to maybe get to a level of health that they haven't been at since the beginning of the year. And the key is going to be to keep your sharpness during that time as well. Man, MVP, Paul Savage and the rest of the team. Like that was, that's solid. That's good to know. Coming out healthy out of so many games, so many back to back, so many, like just being on the road, all that stuff and, and being able to have, you know, obviously uh, with a few people out with, with major injuries, but Everybody else being healthy and ready to go for the next, you know, set of, of games is going to be really important, uh, especially against two teams like, 
you, you know, the, the Kansas City and uh, Milwaukee. So uh, should be interesting to see uh, how how those games go. Uh, I, I'm ready. And I, again, that's so good to know. Um, and good to know also that Pee Wee wasn't wasn't really hurt because I didn't notice that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> Anytime I see a guy with an ice pack, uh, you know, and not on the bench at the end of the game, I'm like, uh oh, yeah. oh did no. we just lo- did we just lose him for another month? No, he's okay. <laughs> they were being careful, and that's what you can do when you're up eight nothing on a team. You can be like, hey, how do you feel? Oh, you you feel a slight thing? Sit down, put this ice pack on your leg. You're fine. Uh, so great stuff, uh, great stuff. Soccer's have no games this weekend. It's the first weekend since uh, Christmas weekend that they haven't had a match. Uh, so that's exciting uh, for everybody who's been working so hard uh, week in and weekend out. Uh, it'll be a chance to uh, uh, unplug a little bit. I don't know. I might be able to go with you to the, to the Loyal Cholos match this weekend, you know, like you yeah. kind of, uh, unplug and get to a different level. Um but speaking of that, of course, we'll be hanging out with all the great folks in the locals. There's the great folks in Chavos de Loyal. There's the great folks in the Rainbow Loyals. Uh, supporters, now is the time. Now is the time. We are halfway through the schedule. The, sa- the state of California mask mandate has been lifted. We are in a safer time than we were in in the first half of the schedule. The Stockers have won 10 in a row. This is the best team in the MASL. This is a club that could bring another championship to San Diego. Now is the time. Let's get the supporter culture going for real in section 19. I don't need a hundred locals. I don't need 82 Chavos every single game, but if 10 of each of you could show up, that could be the difference between the soccer's winning in the playoffs and the soccer's coming up a little bit short in the playoffs and i really truly honest to god bottom of my heart from the bottom of the right ventricle i believe that okay i believe that 25 dedicated supporters coming to six remaining regular season games and every playoff game the rest of the way could be the difference between the san diego soccer's winning their 16th championship or having a great regular season that came up just a little bit short that like craig said we talk about years and decades later you're going, God, we were that close. Am I putting pressure on you? A little, but let's go. Now's the time. We offer $12 tickets to come and support the San Diego Soccers in Section 19. $12 tickets. It's the cheapest ticket in the entire house. It's even cheaper than supporters tickets for other outdoor pro soccer teams in San Diego. Okay, let's make this happen. February 25th against Kansas City, one of the biggest games of the year. February 27th against Milwaukee, one of the biggest games of the year. March 31st against Florida, that's going to be one versus two in the MASL, one of the biggest games of the year. April 3rd against the Fury, wrapping up the season and the playoffs. Let's get these games lit up with supporters' energy. Now's the time. I know we've had excuses. I know we've had other reasons. Forget about it all. Clean slate. Tabla rasa. Six games left. Let's make this happen. Let's go. What he said. No, honestly, it's super important. You guys saw the big difference that having a supporters group there and the culture there makes for the team. Uh, when Chavo Zeloyo visited against Tacoma, I mean, they just destroyed them. And it was it was in large part due to the support in the stands. Um, so we hope we can see everybody out there. Reach out to anybody in the club. Reach out to me specifically. I would love to help you uh, make this happen. Make sure that we get your family out there and go to uh, Section 19 where we will support our boys and, and make some noise. And we make it super simple, too, for, for all of you guys. But for any of that information, reach out to me. Reach out to the club. Uh, and we will get you, uh, you know, get get you ready to go and, and in Section 19 for any of these games. It, hopefully all of them, if you guys can, w- will join us. We would love to have you. I know there's strength in numbers when it comes to supporters, but at some point it starts with one person making one decision to stand up, to scream, to cheer, to sing, to bang a drum, to wave a flag. And then that person gets a buddy and then that person brings a buddy. And the next thing you know, there's eight of you. And the next thing you know, there's 16 of you. And the next thing you know, we're, we're off and running. All I'm saying is that we had a reset moment here. There's 10 days between games. 
We're over halfway through the season, but we're halfway through the home schedule. It's a perfect time to jump on board, to make this special. And then at the end of the year, all we remember is that incredible, incredible supporters energy at the end of the year. Uh, last thing, not, not trying to bury bad news or even, I'm not even hundred percent sure it's bad news yet, but our next match, February 25th, uh, we fully intend to have halftime be a celebration of the newest San Diego professional outdoor pro soccer club, San Diego wave FC in the NWSL. And I love the great people over at wave had a lot of great conversations with, uh, Darcy Bevan, uh, with our good friend, Jesse Beltran. I was just talking to him earlier today, Noah gold. There's some great people in the wave front office. They've been super receptive. They're going to be out tabling February 25th and they will be at the match February 25th. We received notice at the end of last week, or pardon me, at the beginning of this week, uh, after talking to them about activation strategies and whatnot, that <laughs> follow this because it, it breaks my brain. Um, the, because California has lifted the mask mandate indoors, the wave do not feel comfortable bringing their team to the arena for COVID reasons. And look, there's nothing I can say to that. You know, there's nothing you can say to it. It's it's deeply unfortunate. Uh, but I and, and there something's going to happen. They're going to have some kind of presence with us, but it's not going to be what we intended. You know, and, and, and Jesse Beltran, Jerry, who, you know, and used to be with Loyal was part of our uh, our big pep rally when we brought Loyal out before their first ever game. And he knew what we want and what we're what we're intending to make happen for their club. And that's what they want, too. It's, it is what they want, too. They were like really like careful and asking me like multiple times. So there won't be a mask mandate. So we're, we're, where is it going to be? You know, and even though the crowd, of course, is still vaccinated or tested at Pachanga, that was a deal breaker uh, for them. So we're not going to probably I, I don't know 100 percent, but I feel pretty confident saying we're not going to see Alex out there next Friday. We're not going to see their head coach. We're probably not going to see their team. We might see their president. We might see something else. Uh, but you know, <laughs> yeah, another rake I stepped on this week, but, but it, it is what it is. I mean, I can't tell them otherwise. And I understand their position as a club. I really do. I think they're going to be an awesome club. I'm excited to work with them, uh, to become friends for years and years to come. And, and they were already talking about like, let's do something bigger down the road, you know, but, uh, some version of wave will be there, but it's not going to be what we wanted. You know, it, it's a bummer, and I hope that everybody understands that we are on the soccer side doing everything that we can um, to make sure that we bring you what you would expect out of a, a, a wave night um, or a loyal night, and, you know, that sort of a thing, especially because it means so much to many of you. Uh, but it, it's it's unfortunate. We're in a time still now, even though the, the mask mandate has been lifted, where people are being extra careful. And when it comes to sports, I mean, I respect that they want to keep everybody safe and just not take any chances. However, it, you know, it does affect us. Um, but we hope that everybody that's here that's listening and that understands that we are, you know, working very hard. I know Craig is, is working very hard to make sure that we make something happen for you guys uh, all. And um, you should definitely still come out. That game in itself, it, it sells itself. I mean, we're going to be facing off again against the Kansas City Comets, who is a fantastic, fantastic team. Um, these two powerhouses of the MASL and we don't get to see this team come very often, Craig. So it's going to be another one of those things like you, you don't miss your chance to see a fantastic game. Uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. Plus let's bring up, I mean, it's on the graphic you displayed there, Jerry. We have a soccer's 2021, 2022 team poster. That is a okay. giveaway for everybody in attendance. Okay. Let me drop a little bit more knowledge on you. Canale. Because, yeah, because the mask mandate is lifted, we're back in business at Pachanga Arena San Diego. And what I mean by that is the Parade of Champions is back. Our, our regular pregame ceremonies are back. And after the match on Friday, February 25th, you'll have the chance to get that team poster autographed by the soccer's team. You'll have that opportunity. It's going to be done in a, they, I was, I heard about it at, at the staff meeting, how they do it. It's going to be kind of in shifts so that we don't have everybody packed in a line uh, next to one another, but 
But what we haven't been able to do the first six matches of the year, we are able to do again in the second half of the season. So it's the team poster night that soccer's fans have known and loved for years where you get that poster, but then you get that poster autographed by the guys whose faces are on that poster uh, after the match. And that is happening on the 25th. It's a $2 Bud Light Friday night. $2 Bud Light Friday night. I'll say it again. $2 Bud Light Friday night. Feeling is right. Get those vibes all tight. Come on out for the Sockers and the Comets, the two of the four best teams, two of the three best teams in the MASL. What more could you want? Potential finals preview, you know, this Sockers Comets matchup. So an incredible night, Friday, February 25th. We'll talk about it more next week. Of course, Sunday, February 27th, Milwaukee Wave, the last two defending Ron Newman Cup, Cup holders head to head. Marcio Leite coming back to town. Ian Bennett, Derek Huffman, Gordy Gerson, and the rest of the Milwaukee Wave coming to town. Cannot wait for those matches. Uh, that one, a Sunday evening affair. Get your tickets for both. We'll have the Thunderstick giveaways against the Wave so we can make it loud. It's uh, Noche Latina. We'll have a fan fest out in the parking lot starting at 3 p.m. So a chance to come out, get a, get a little bit loose, have some fun uh, out in the parking lot before the match. Let's bring that supporter energy. Let's bring it to the, to the pregame outside and let's bring it inside and let's have an incredible weekend. I, I, this is, to me, it's the most exciting weekend of the whole MASL season is next I'm weekend. So ready for it. So excited. And it's good to be back. I enjoyed the break of not having, uh, you know, some games at home and being able to relax a tiny bit. I mean, we're still working through this whole thing, obviously, but I, I can't wait. I think Friday night is going to be amazing. Really looking forward to seeing Ian Bennett uh, uh, and the Wave visit us here as well. So, yeah, get your tickets. Go to sdsoccers.com backslash tickets or what's the number? 866 799 nine goal there it is it's on the screen six six seven nine nine goal <laughs> get your tickets now for the san diego soccer it's tickets available at sdsoccers.com backslash tickets or by calling hold on it's coming up eight six six seven nine nine four six two five there it is <laughs> all right uh let's let's go to masl news uh looking at the standings we talked about it the soccers are now on the top uh you know we just heard craig giles uh talk about a potential drawback to finishing number one uh i don't know if that means we're going to go try and drop games uh so <laughs> somewhere along the okay. way i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so uh but when you do look at those standings now you've got the soccers at 36 points number one in the league florida at 31 points leading the east and kansas city at 28 points leading the central so all of a sudden you got eight points difference between the soccers and kansas city Kansas City does have three matches in hand over the Sockers, but as Alan uh, made the great point in the in the chat earlier, points in the standings table are better than games in hand. Look at what happened to the Loyal last year when they had all those games in hand and they didn't win the games uh, when they had them in hand. It's true. Uh, games in hand are merely opportunity. That's what you did. Yeah. Okay, so now you look at the wild card bracket. <laughs> Oh man. oh, man. Ontario in... Oh, man, indeed. Ontario in fourth with 22 points. But now six losses, seven wins. Dallas and Baltimore with 20 points. Importantly, Baltimore doing so with three fewer matches played. St. Louis is in seventh with 17 points. But they just dropped a game. Milwaukee is in eighth with 15 points. They have a home and home this weekend coming up with Kansas City. Huge, huge two matches on the MASL schedule. And don't look now, Gerardo Jimenez, but here comes Chihuahua. They took five <laughs> points out of six last weekend in Missouri. They went to St. Louis and won outright. They went to Kansas City and they beat the Comets in overtime. And Chihuahua with 10 points, they host Harrisburg back-to-back -back matches down at Corner Sport Arena in Chihuahua Ooh. this weekend. 
They've got two home games against Tacoma coming up. They got two home games against Ontario coming up. They're not in yet, but put Chihuahua in, man. Chihuahua's going to make the playoffs. Who's the other team that has the small field? Baltimore. Oh, okay. I was going to say, you think Harrisburg is going to enjoy going to that that field? Probably not. Uh, Baltimore, if they were to travel, they'd probably feel right at home. But Harrisburg? Uh-oh. Yeah, no. Uh, we've been saying it, Craig. Chihuahua is a totally different team at home. Uh, I Again, I love watching Chihuahua at home because the Spanish commentating on that thing uh, – with I think it's uh, Carlos and, and Jimmy, right? And Jaime. Yep. Uh, yep. So those guys are amazing. So, no, really looking forward to those games too. And what do you know? Look at Chihuahua moving their way up. Still plenty of time to make their way into the playoffs. Hey, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but if Chihuahua wins twice against Harrisburg this weekend, they'll just be six points behind Ontario. They've got two matches at home against Ontario. They've got one on the road against Ontario still. Ooh. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Not saying. Just saying. Uh, there are right. only three teams I'm willing to eliminate right now, and those three are Tacoma, Utica, and Harrisburg. I just don't see a path. I, I think those are the worst three teams in the league, and I think they're going to stay that way. Yeah, it's. I mean, can't put it any more bluntly than that. It's true. I agree with you on that. Uh, the OL rain. I had to look this up today, my friend, because well, you? I how saw. You? The, yeah, the OL rain, and I'm like, did they skip? Is that Orlando? And they forgot the R. It used in, to be known as the designation. Or the Seattle rain, right? Yeah, but that's Olympique Lyonnaise. Yeah. It's a connection to a French pro outfit, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. They uh the uh the French team bought the rain and renamed them OL Rain. So OL Rain, the NWSL team, the, the women's pro soccer league team that played previously in Tacoma and is moving back this year to Lumen Field, the, the field that the Sounders and the Seahawks use that used to be called something else, but uh, is now Lumen Field. Uh, what what was it used to call? It doesn't matter. Uh, CenturyLink? That's right. Century, and then it was something else before that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're moving back to the big stadium, 50,000 seat or 70,000 seat stadium, OL Reign. This is the team that has Megan Rapino, mm -hmm. right? Mm hmm. Yep. Why are we talking about NWSL's OL Rain? Because this afternoon, OL Rain announced their new general manager of their club, and it's Nick Pereira. What? That's crazy. Knock that me over with a handkerchief, of, man. That came wow. out of nowhere when I saw that. I was like, oh, man, this is a great Photoshop job. Who did this? Nope. It was directly from their site. I'm like, oh, no way. No way. <laughs> How does this affect us, Craig? How does this affect MASL? How does this affect the coma? Well, great question. And I don't know necessarily the answer 100%. <laughs> uh, is he still involved with, you know? like I, that? Well, the tea leaves are yes, because first off, Tacoma didn't say farewell Nick Pereira today. Uh, I mean, I guess they could be late to the party doing that, but they didn't do anything. Uh, the MASL posted the story on the front page of their website in the middle of it. So I think Nick is going to keep playing for the stars on the weekend while being the general manager of OL rain. And I think we have the answer to the question of why Nick Pereira is not the head coach or the GM or in any management position of the stars, the team that he's been running basically the last three years. Yep. Yep. That's lots that answers everything right there. Yeah. That was, it, it makes, it makes sense now. Why is Tacoma such a mess? Why is Nick not involved? Why does Nick look so passive and distracted in games? 
It's because he's busy trying to figure out who to pair with Megan Rapino on the right side. He's busy. That's, that's crazy. That is so crazy to me. Nick, but. Nick, God bless you. I've known you for years. I love you. Incredible opportunity. I hope you have incredible success. Mucho éxito. And Megan Rapino playing for the MASL is the is the other publicity stunt I have that I think will will jumpstart this league. So make it happen. It does it have to happen in Tacoma? I guess. I wanted it to be with the Sockers, but make it happen for us. Make it happen with the Sockers. Let's get Megan into the uh, MASL. Let's go. So, so yeah, it's your job now, uh, Nick, to sell her on us. Okay, thanks. No, yeah, best of luck to Nick Pereira. I think that's an amazing opportunity. Uh, and I think he'll do great. Honestly, I mean, he has so much experience. I think he's going to do real, real well. I hope uh, I hope the best for him. And I hope that he starts, uh, you know, making his way into the, the, the coaching, uh, possibly. I mean, general manager. Wow, dude, that's crazy. But, I mean, he has the yeah. skill set. He knows, he knows how to do it. He's been doing it already. And no, I'm excited for him and, and where that goes. Not so excited for Tacoma. Uh, kind of feeling a little bad for Tacoma, to be honest. Yeah, me too. Uh, last thing, uh, we noted that when Florida was getting ready for this road trip to Dallas, that when you pulled up their roster, that Hugo Silva, who was the, at the moment, MASL goalkeeping triple crown leader, leading in wins and goal against and save percentage, was listed as an inactive player. Uh, and there was a little bit of asking around practice. Is he hurt? Is he what? And the latest scuttlebutt I have, Jerry, is that Hugo Silva isn't going to play for Florida the rest of the year. Oh, no. That he is in visa jail. The same place where Poyo is and where so many great players uh, for the MASL are. And oh. it sucks. And, you know, we talked about it on last week's show. And the league can worry about glass. The league can worry about celebrations. The league can worry about a lot of things until they can get all the players who want to play in their league in their league. They're not where they want to be. Uh, I think it's horrible news. I'm in no way celebrating this at all. Uh, that Hugo Silva is probably not going to play anymore for Florida. Does it change the game board, so to speak? Does it change the big board? It does. Yeah. It changes the big board in a big way. Uh, the the Tropics used Ruben Navarretti and uh, Brett Petrasic in goal against Dallas, and they did go to shootout, but they lost that game. And I... Uh, I say this, Jerry, to kind of throw the hook into the lake and we'll drag it back. We'll drag it back next week and in future weeks. But trade winds are starting to blow. Yeah. Trade winds are starting to blow. There are a couple teams that are now clearly out of it. There are a couple of teams that are clearly in it. And there are a couple of teams that are on the edge and could move one way or another. Yeah. And don't be surprised to see Florida try and make a trade for an established goalkeeper to try and see Kansas city, make a trade to both to themselves, Baltimore, make a trade, Dallas, maybe Ontario. Um, yeah, we saw Ontario make a move. Obasi didn't suit up. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, this is that time. And, and it's kind of why we talk about peak performance. The soccer's have set a level now, my friend. And I think, after this weekend's games, I think the rest of the league is like, uh oh, there's the level. How do we get there? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be interesting. You know, next week I was thinking, well, what are we going to do? We'll definitely prepare you for the, the games for the 25th and 27th next week on the pod. But we may also be talking about some moves happening around the MASL, some some important moves for, for others. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. A lot of things happening. A lot of excitement. Gabriel said in the, and I don't know if he's uh, accurate on this, but I'm going to assume he is because he's Gabriel. He said Obasi had a hamstring injury. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, this weekend schedule is an interesting one. Uh, we, we referenced a couple of these games. Friday, uh, one game only. Heat at Chihuahua, 7 p.m. our time. Saturday, Comets at Wave, 5 o'clock our time. Heat at Chihuahua, 6 o'clock our time. Blast at Stars, 
seven o'clock our time. Blast are going to run the show there, I'm sure. Uh, Sunday, Wave at Comets, a three o'clock game our time. And Monday, Ambush at Sidekicks. A, oh, a uh, 11.30 a.m. game on Monday 24th. I think that's President Day game uh, for the Ambush and the Sidekicks. Yep. So those are the games between now and the next time we get together next Tuesday night. Nice. No, it's a good lineup. Uh, it's going to be some interesting games. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for... Uh, for the home games though honestly uh we maybe yeah. hopefully we'll get a, a game here uh home but it just won't be masl um hope i hope we get to see you against the cholos lo, the loyal cholos game that'd be fun but five minutes out, we have to wait a little bit more however those games will but maybe they'll hold me up for the next week and we can talk about them in the pod we're back uh next week on are we back next week on tuesday yeah oh. we're back next week on tuesday yeah we're back next week on tuesday yeah, we're back okay. next week on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, we we'll are. Be here in full industrial strength <laughs> next Tuesday, regular time, regular channel. But that wraps up today's show. We hit that ninety-minute mark pretty much uh, right on the on the dot. Excellent work nice. by everyone involved. Want to say special thanks to Craig Giles, uh, this week's special guest, the captain of the team. Of course, our executive producer of these podcasts and live broadcasts is Jerry Jimenez, the man who allows everything technically to roll. Jerry, great work as always, my friend. Thank you, sir. Uh, always a pleasure. And we'll see you. We'll see you next Tuesday at five. For Jerry Jimenez, I'm Craig Elston. Don't forget, follow us on all of our platforms at San Diego Soccer's, including TikTok. If you haven't yet, go get that TikTok app download. We're what 27 people from a thousand already on mm -hmm. TikTok. Uh, go see how I paired XTC with Charlie Gonzalez, nutmegging Chris Toth. Go enjoy that. Uh, all that fun uh, on all of our social media platforms. We're off this weekend. Enjoy the MASL stuff. We will see you next Tuesday here at 5 p.m. Until then, have a great week, a better weekend, and go Sockers! <laughs>